I lost a daughter in a house fire when I was 18 years old, my youngest daughter, on Christmas Eve. That was my breaking point that I never ever thought I would come back from. I was not willing to get past that. My friends would beg me to please participate in Christmas or to not lock myself in my room or to just believe that there was a, a reason for it. Just try to believe in um, something other than being selfish and losing in my loss. I wouldn't do it for anybody, ever. I'm ashamed to say I did not do it for my other children. And this one afternoon and this one person who knew exactly how I felt turned my whole world upside down. We didn't know how receptive the women in the prison environment would be to these same concepts that we're essentially bringing forward in a master's degree program in spiritual psychology. And as it turned out, what a surprise, women in prison are just as human and divine as people who are not in prison. It seems as though whether one is in prison or not makes very little difference. Dear President Holnick, thank you for making the Freedom to Choose workshop available at Valley State Prison for Women. I am honored that you took an interest in my request and so grateful that you made such a wonderful event possible. I would also like to send a very special thank you to the graduates that graciously volunteered their time and expense to come here. I would like to tell you about the weekend as it had a great impact on the participants. I stood in front of our gym with many other women all unprepared for what we would face. The general mood was fear. We were nervous and had no idea what to expect. As I watched the many volunteers walk towards the gym, I prayed so hard that we would find a common ground. As the day progressed, I realized how much we have in common. I honestly thought the volunteers would teach us new insightful methods that we would in turn use to communicate beyond the life of our bad choices and low self-esteem. What I did not expect was that we would help them as well. My name is Rhonda Leland. I'm serving almost two life sentences. I'm not eligible for the board until 2036. This workshop started because Rhonda had the courage to write to the president of the university and say, could you please come and give a talk? We could really benefit from that. And in their communication over time, the idea developed to have a whole workshop. And so we're actually here because Rhonda took the initiative. She had the courage to take a risk and to write that letter. So thank you. A group of USM volunteers work in TRIO, which is in groups of three, presenting USM skills in an environment very similar to USM classroom at Valley State Prison for Women. The name of the Freedom to Choose workshop really derives from the work of Viktor Frankl and the book he wrote called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a Jewish psychiatrist living in Germany just before World War II started. The secret police came to his house and he was taken to a concentration camp. And when he got there, he noticed that everything, everything can be taken from a person except one essential freedom. There's one freedom that can never be taken from anybody and that's the freedom to choose one's attitude regardless of circumstances. We design processes 
where people can talk about their hurts, but because the overall context of what they're involved in is loving, healing goes on in the classroom. My daughter's boyfriend was shot and killed in front of her last August. He died in her arms. And I haven't had a chance to be with my daughter to really see where she's at. I think she's using drugs. And I'm almost 100% sure because, of course, I know the signs. And I'm trying to choose ways now how to get at her, how to get under her skin, how for her to relate to me. Because if I don't, she's either going to end up dead or she's going to end up right here. When I was a little girl, my older cousin was living with us at the time. He called me into his room and laid me on my, and laid me on my, uh, on my back in, um, on the floor. I didn't know about sex and stuff like that at, at a real young age. And I didn't know what he was doing, but I, know, I knew it wasn't right. And he had told me not to tell nobody. And, um, and I told Grandma, and she goes, who have you told? Those were her first words. And so I told nobody, nobody but you. She says, well, you don't never have to worry about that happening again. She goes, don't you tell anybody. Don't you let Grandpa know, don't you tell anybody. As I got older and stuff, I was real promiscuous. And I felt like, you know, that was the problem and that was the reason why I behaved the way I behaved. I let it out. When the secret did come out, Grandma acted as if she had no idea what I was talking about. So how did that make you feel when she did not? Betrayed. Buddha has a quote. He said, uh, being angry at someone is like holding a red hot rock in your hand, getting ready to throw it at them. In the meantime, you get burned. Self-forgiveness is putting down the rock. Grandma was from the old days. And that, that she just did what, what she could to keep the family together. That I was just a little girl and I couldn't have stopped it. <laughs> I had to blame for you know, because my father was too hard on me, that's why I'm sitting in prison doing a life sentence. And the blame doesn't lie with anybody. Freedom to Choose taught me how to work through that, like how to process that, how to figure it out. And I just discovered, I just discovered today that um, I was focusing on our relationship not working because of him. It's all his fault. Of course. <laughs> well, always everybody else's fault. Shucks. I mean, I have to take personal responsibility for this relationship. <laughs> As we let go of our judgments and we begin to learn how to forgive ourselves, to truly have compassion for ourselves and for our humanness, uh, there is an incredible transformation that takes place. At first I did it to get a chrono so that the board would say, oh, this is a wonderful girl. And as time went on, I started paying attention and I started listening. And God changed me. Yeah. And um, he changed me into a new person. And now he's going to let me free. People who are in prison are in a situation where they've received feedback from their universe saying some of the choices that you've made are inappropriate. And for most of us growing up in this culture, we don't clearly distinguish between who we are as a person and behavior or choices that we have made. And I think part of the power of what goes on in the Freedom to Choose workshop is that distinction is clarified. Who you are as a person is different from the choices you made and it's different from the behavior in which you've engaged. And so you can learn to love and accept yourself. You can learn to love and accept your choices and you can also learn to make different choices.
When we say that healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt, we're saying that is the key to releasing ourselves from unnecessary suffering. We literally bring loving to the parts inside that hurt. And in that loving, the hurt cannot uh, maintain itself. Thank you, Rhonda. I'm not shocked that you did this. Because when I walked into this prison over 10 years ago, you were there for me. I commend you and I thank you for this whole thing. I'm not shocked that you did this. You deserve this and you did this. I am guilty of underestimating myself and the women around me. I learned so much from the weekend. The most profound is how well we can communicate with others. Oh, I so love you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Sam. Thank you. It's easy. For myself, the most frightening thing for me to do is reach out beyond the people I already know. I look around here, and this is my um, fifth experience here, and I find even each experience that I have here is deeper than the experience before. And I think each time it gets better because I keep getting more and more in touch with myself and, and who I really am, and I take in from the group who all of you are, because all of you are the, the, the same loving beings that I believe I am. Because I am in prison, there is a certain fear of how I will be received or treated, and I think that is widespread in this environment. Today I really spoke, and I brought a lot of feelings out. And I want to know more about who I really am and not what I used to be. On this weekend, I saw women who felt significant. I had a wonderful mother. She raised us to walk in positiveness, and everything that I've ever stepped to she said, can't not in your vocabulary. You can do anything, but you have to do what your heart tells you to do. And I'm, re I'm reclaiming that today. The openness and understanding of worth brought out a certain shine and empowerment in so many eyes. I saw the most shy stand up to speak on their essence and worth. I realized today that I never really forgave myself for the role that I played in our relationship. Uh, Malia, I appreciate you so much because you helped me to see the things that I didn't realize. The unworthiness that I had, the unforgiveness that I thought I had, that I forgave. Um, it just felt good and I really thank you for helping me to see that. I watched the depressed smile. I found out you can't change for somebody. You gotta change for yourself. That's right. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I heard words of strength and encouragement given to others by those I thought possessed an I don't care attitude. I'm so thankful that you made me cry because I was really, really getting worried that, you know, I just wasn't even a person anymore. I keep thinking about this saying, what we need is more people who specialize in the impossible by Theodore Roth. The reason is, I believe many of us incarcerated have fallen into a belief that we can accomplish very little. However, I learned from some wonderful people that nothing is impossible. The great news is that some learned that from me. USM is a wonderful place and I've learned an awful lot there. But I'm telling you the truth, being here for three days is deeper, more healing, and more special to me than anything that I've ever done. We may never know the exact ways in which we touched each other's lives. I know we will never forget the way our life was changed on this weekend. It's amazing 
It's incredible the way you love is a miracle. You lift me up, you walk beside me when I forget. That I'm a gift just the way I am. Let love lift and help us understand. Shine your light and let it in. Shine your light. You don't have to hide it. Shine what I have to do is break down those walls and break down all the barriers that have been holding me back and just let the love come out of me, you know, just let, let it all out. Because if you don't let it out, it's going to waste, you know, so I'm not going to waste me. I'm not going to waste love. I'm not going to waste life. I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to, I'm going to love it, you know. Shine your light. The real prison is in our mind. I'm free now. It's just geography. It's just a space. The space in here is what matters in my heart. It's not always easy, so use it well. You make a difference. In just the last half hour, I've had more life than I lived out there. I feel like I'm free, and the prison just doesn't know it yet. You're a gift, a candle in the dark. It's a very clear demonstration that it's possible under extremely adverse conditions to be more loving, more caring, more connected with one's heart. If it can happen there, what would it be like in any place? I think the thing I love most about the Prison Project is the universality of this work. This is not just something that a few people here and there are doing. As far as I can tell, there's an awakening that's going on on a global level. And I think the more that we can get this quality of work out there for those who are ready to receive it, I don't see how it could help but have a significant effect. Every time we work on ourselves and we resolve one thing, then we have resolved a part of the negativity that affects the entire human family. It's a great work. Shine your light. I walked out the metal detector into what we would call the free world, and the breeze was on my skin, and it felt different than it ever had before. And I knew freedom in a way that I never knew it before. It wasn't just being able to walk outside, but it was having gained an understanding that freedom comes from inside. It's the, the beliefs that you choose to hold and it's the perceptions that you choose to hold. Shine your light, cause you're beautiful and you shine.